Welcome back, everybody. We are on part two, and it's time for us to start getting into the hot tags of the week, some different rumors and stories and news and whatever that happened in the world of professional wrestling. Start off with the TNA one. Uh, uh, Earl Hebner is going to be inducted into the TNA Hall of Fame by Billy Corgan? Really? No, Billy Corgan's a huge Earl Hebner fan. He, like, talks about him in all of his songs. Don't you ever listen to Smashing Pumpkins? <laughs> 1979 was all about Earl Hebner, right? Yeah. You know, that was a 19 Earl Hebner. <laughs> tonight, tonight, it's about the Montreal Screwjob. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> this is a weird choice. I mean, not a weird choice for Earl Hebner to go in, but Billy Corgan? Never would have thought that. I think it is completely expected. He's the biggest celebrity on their payroll right now. That's sad. I mean, Billy Corgan's the Shit, he's, of a major he's, band. <laughs> it's not the sad. only celebrity on their payroll. They ain't got any fucking star power anymore. Yeah, but you would think like there's at least a you know a big wrestling entity. Well, I mean, the fact that they're putting an Earl Hebner into their Hall of Fame this year speaks about how bad their star power is at this point. So yeah, they been... only actually do one induction typically. So the fact that it's Earl Hebner, and no offense to Earl, he's one of the best referees of all time, but. You ain't a fucking headline act, buddy. <laughs> well, who's been in the Hall of Fame so far? It's Kurt Angle. Sting and Team 3D. All people from, you know, elsewhere. Wow. Not even AJ Styles. Not AJ Styles. Not even Jeff Jarrett, the fucking founder of the company. <laughs> God damn it, TNA. Who do you guys think would end up being next year if they're doing Earl Hebner now? Dixie. I was thinking maybe Borash. No, it's going to be Dixie. <laughs> <laughs> it's 100% going to be Dixie. Before that company folds, she's going to make sure she's in that freaking Hall of Fame. That's ridiculous. Just one last fuck you to the fans. That's going to be one of her major <laughs> announcements. I'm in the Hall of Fame, fuckers. She's no, gonna I'm going to be inducting myself. <laughs> she's going to make the announcement, but not after Tino Ortiz has come out, folded his arms, and nodded his head. <laughs> and Dude, then the following year, they'll induct Billy Corgan into it. And Earl Hebner will induct him. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about some people that are in TNA and involved in that stuff that might be coming to WWE. The latest rumor is that WWE is interested in the Hardy Boys coming back. And it's not just because of the Dudley Boys, but because, you know, why not, essentially. I don't buy it, really. Do you guys? All right, Jeff, we've got this new policy where your strikes go away after a while. We can bring you back. Um, no, I think it's more, I think it's just dirt sheet, uh, bullshit. They've been popping out names all left, right, and center this week of who's going to return. I'm giving no attention. I think this Same. is a situation where I'll believe it when I see it. Exactly. I think people are just fantasizing at this point. I would be very, very surprised if I saw them make an appearance. So I'm not putting any stock in that at all. I'm just saying it's just dirt sheets right now. I'm going to pull this one back up. Until I see any materialization of any of this, this is all just a bunch of scoop, scoop, scoops, dot com scuttlebutt. Indeed. What about the other rumors that have been floating around here that there's, what, Jay Lethal and whatever? Like, everybody just loves to toss these out. It's just like, oh, that guy not in WWE? Hey, he's going to come into WWE. Well, have you heard what everyone's fucking talking about with Jay Lethal recently? Oh, WWE copied Jay Lethal with two title belts on Seth Rollins. Because that's never been done before. And because everybody knows, you know, you don't watch WWE, you watch Ring of Honor, and if you have a champion that has another belt, well then all those Ring of Honor fans will come right to WWE, right? Oh, guys, I just got breaking news, actually. This just in. Stephen Colbert is coming to WWE. <laughs> Potentially. <according laughs> oh, wait, to wait, I, I just got some extra breaking news on top of that. Stephen Colbert has changed his name to Stephen Lethal to copy Ring of Honor. <laughs> and he's won two titles. From Tana. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Stupid as hell. I don't buy any of this stuff. It's one of those things where I not only would be more surprised if it happens out of nowhere and I didn't see it coming, but that's the only way that I'm going to believe him. Because I can't see somebody like a Jeff Hardy coming back to WWE. Maybe ever. They've got way too many issues with, like you know, being politically correct and stuff like that. Now they're not going to be like, Hey, you know who we need that druggy guy who wrestled a match completely out of his mind. And 
gets into arguments and breaks his fucking uh, bones every once in a while because he just decides to flip his quad or whatever. Yeah, and his uh, his brother, the, the fat one. <laughs> I don't think that they're going to be doing this. I love that just the Dave Meltzers of the world just wake up in the morning and they're just like, eh, Jeff Hardy, that'll uh, make a few hits. Well, they've got like a wheel that they spin. It's like, who's going to WWE today? Oh, is it like the Royal Roulette? Oh, I got 100. Awesome. They spin it again. Today it's going to be Christopher Daniels. But he's going to come as Curry Man. Woo! Another new signing in WWE, ZZ from Tough Enough, has been signed to a contract for some fucking reason. Amanda Sakamano, Sakamano, I don't know how to pronounce that 100%, but the hot blonde girl who was runner up, she is going to be on Total Divas, and she's going to basically be rep uh, replacing Naomi. So, what do you guys think about these two? That they were the runner ups, and they both get deals. Well, this obviously gives the groundwork to all those plans that we had about that rumored alligator division that they were going to have in WWE. So they could just bring back Hornswoggle wearing the alligator outfit. You can even get Titus O'Neil out there in an alligator outfit. That could be like the, the big boss that he wrestles uh, at WrestleMania. El Torito is not going to be with Los Matadores anymore. Oh shit. There the could gimmick. be like handicap matches. How do you say uh, alligator, alligator in, in Spanish? El Gator? El Alligator? <laughs> Arriba, arriba. Ow, it's biting my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys interested in seeing ZZ potentially get a shot in WWE, or is this one of those things where you agree with me where this is a complete waste of money? Well, if rumor rumor has it. <laughs> rumor has it right now that he is going to be the partner of Ambrose and Reigns at the pay-per-view. So just, just, just saying, you know, I read it on the dirt sheet, so it's probably true. I heard Jay Lethal's going to be his tech partner. ZZ Lethal? It's <laughs> 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 fucking terrible. <laughs> yeah, let's move on to another one. Uh, there are talks that, and of course, again, you don't know if this is true or not, but the impression with Chad Gable is that they really, really like him, but he's too damn small to be a top superstar in WWE. Do you guys agree or disagree? Is there potential for Chad Gable to break out of this? Who the fuck's Chad Gable? You don't know Chad Gable? NXT. Ready, willing, and Gable? Dude who's teaming up with Jason Jordan? Oh, singlet dude. Okay, I know who he is. Yeah, he was in the Olympics. Yeah, he's boring. You don't even know who he is, do you? <laughs> eh, he looks boring. <laughs> no, he's not boring at all. He's actually quite entertaining. He's got, like, this towel. That says his name on it. Ooh. I was going to say, that's his gimmick, Fucking, right? Uh, thrilling stuff right there. <laughs> I don't know. I've been thinking that he's been doing pretty good lately. He's not, you know, the most amazing thing in the world, but for somebody who is a smaller guy, it's kind of de defeating to hear that kind of stuff, if that's what's going on, where it's like, we like you, you're a good wrestler, you're in from the Olympics, that's great, you got some new character changes, that's awesome, but you're too damn small. Yeah, Triple H probably saw him, got reminded of Kurt Angle, and was like, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> and Daniel Bryan. <laughs> yeah. Well, He's like, oh, how's your neck? more like Brad Maddox. Who, Gable? Mm -hmm. I did actually see one segment backstage with him um, on YouTube. He's, I couldn't really take much away from him, but the reality of it is, if he's that good, he'll be okay. Look, he already won me over when Jason Jordan and him were in a uh, promo, and Jordan was going to say, we're not only willing, we're able, and he's like, we're Gable. <laughs> I was already like, I like this guy. <laughs> he does puns. This is amazing. He needs to have a chip on his shoulder and tag up with Fandango. What else we have here? Kevin Nash had a Twitter account, uh, fuck up. Supposedly he was hacked. You know, people love to throw that word around, but... Fitness model Jennifer Michelli or Michelli, I don't know how to pronounce that 100%. Uh, there was a nude photo that was posted on his account, and because his account is tied into WWE.com, all those kids got to see that woman's nude photo. Is this mm. a situation where Kevin Nash was hacked or just too stupid and tweeted it out? I could buy Kevin Nash being hacked. He actually seems to have his head screwed on. And even if he didn't, who's going to fucking do anything about it? No one. That's who. Kurt Angle. What about Kurt Angle? Drunken Twitter thing. 
Okay, but what about him? Yeah, he'll figure out a way to get in there somewhere. Okay. He always is. What else is he going to do? Wrestle for TNA? He's not doing that anymore. Well, hopefully he didn't tear a quad while typing it out. <laughs> now, with all the things that are going down with social media the past couple weeks, we've got the Zara Schreiber situation. We've got the Jasmine Aribi thing. You guys think there's going to be uh, negatives that's going to come Kevin Nash's way? Nope. Can't do jack shit to a guy who's not under contract with you. Isn't he? Fucking isn't. He's been working indie dates all left, right, and center. If he does have a deal, open. it's an open contract, and if it's an yeah, open contract, they've got no authority over him. He's, he has a Legends deal, so he can do other non-televised events. Yeah, I can't see him getting any kind of punishment for this. I think it'll just go unnoticed, basically. It's a, yeah, it's a small snafu. At most, he'll get a slap on the wrist. He'll have, he'll have a text from Triple H, like, yo, come on, man. You can text me those naked pics all you want. Just just don't post them on there, <laughs> It'll be, yo, come on, man. What's her name? <laughs> <laughs> Global Force Wrestling has signed a TV distribution deal with Boulder Creek International. Anybody have a clue what that company is? Because this is a foreign one, and I don't pay attention to other countries. I'm an American. I, I know Boulder Creek local, but international, that's out of my jurisdiction. <laughs> <laughs> Not a Wait. clue. I was just going to ask you, Wego, if you came across that from when you were over the pond, wherever the creek. Eh, nah, can't say I have. I'm glad they've got a TV deal, but from what I'm understanding, it won't be playing in America. And I gathered that from an interview that Chael Sonnen did recently. He said Jared's managed to get international, but he hasn't been able to get anything national. Well, it's hmm. a good start. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, there's a massive international audience, audience for wrestling these days. Definitely, especially considering a lot of people can't get WWE without paying an arm and a leg in Europe, so. And frankly, wasn't that like TNA's deal? You know, weren't, weren't they like number one in Europe? Didn't we get like some caller on the Raw Post show running us down saying how WWE is like number three worldwide or something like that? There's a reason why TNA did very, very well in England. It's because you had to pay for a satellite subscription to watch the WWE. You didn't need to do that with TNA. Hmm. Either way, do you guys think that this is the right step forward, or should they have waited to get uh, an American deal? I right. think any exposure and any distribution that they can get is good. Any exposure, distribution, and most importantly, money! It's all about the money. They are in desperate need of money right now, because they're not making it on the gates. They're not going to be making it off merchandising. They need something to get their feet off the ground. Definitely not with the gates. I mean, if you've seen any of the arenas, it's embarrassing. I hope they tarp it off very well for the camera. Um, but from the <laughs> YouTube, for the tarps, <laughs> or from the YouTube clips that I've seen, they ain't doing jack shit, and it looks really awful. Hmm. Um, I feel bad because they've got a talented roster and quite a few talented guys on there. Um, any distribution is good because that's the only way they're going to get their names out there. Moving on here, there has been a little bit of a rise in YouTube activity from different people. I've mentioned before how I'm fond of Xavier Woods' channel, Up, Up, Down, Down. It looks like another person from WWE is going to be having their YouTube uh, channel coming up soon. It's Taste of Tennille. Emma's got a cooking channel she wants to do. Oh. Just, throw, just throwing it out there, two things. First, are you going to watch it? Second, why aren't you going to watch it? Well, having her face and food together is not going to be a good combination for me. What if she talks about different things like gum? <laughs> <laughs> I said awkwardly. <laughs> Am I going to watch it? No. Why? I can think of 101 reasons, including jacking off, which is a better more like use of my time. So, Isn't this also kind of sexist? Taste of Tennille. Like, are they just going to, like, put her, like, eh, we don't want her wrestling. Let's just put her in a kitchen. Let's have her do something in there. Well, it's better to have a cooking channel than for her to be like, all right, my YouTube channel is going to be about folding laundry. She should have a cooking podcast. I hear they work out really well. Be like, oh, you smell that? Mm. <laughs> no, sh she should do, like, a, a series where she's, like, a thief. <laughs> like um, <laughs> that, that TV show that came out a couple years ago where it was like uh, these professional thieves go into your store, they rob you, and then they show you what the flaws were. 
She just goes there and she just robs you, but she doesn't follow it up. <laughs> no, she just does it, but she's like not very good at it. So she just she just gets caught all the time. <laughs> and she's like, "No, I just forgot to pay." No, really, seriously, you don't no, need to fire we're, me. We're doing a TV show. No, seriously, you don't have to handcuff me. Hey. Yeah, and they don't stop her getting arrested. They just keep recording. Oh, is that why she did that little hand movement? She made that up because she was trying to get out of handcuffs one day. And she's like, "That might be good." <laughs> I thought that was like the hand movements of her pulling things off the shelves and sneaking into her purse. <laughs> oh, poor Tennille. It's like, oh, a taste of Tennille. I really want to show you guys my cooking. And we're like, that's ah, funny. You got st uh, stopped robbing shit. Whatever. <laughs> poor woman. So we all managed to avoid the obvious sex joke, too. Good job, team. Oh, now I'm curious. What's the obvious sex joke? Taste of Tennille. Hmm. I think I'd rather watch that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're, I was fine until he did the sound effect. <laughs> yeah, that kind of. Uh... <laughs> I forgot where we were at right now. That just threw me off. Oh, okay. Uh, Triple H has revealed the title for the new NXT Takeover event, which is NXT Takeover Respect. Now, Peyton and I had a little bit of a back and forth earlier about this, our first impressions. I'm totally against the idea. I think it's really bland. Peyton really likes it. Before he and I get back into this, <laughs> Kaylin, what do you think? Is ta NXT TakeOver Respect good name, bad name, could be better, could be worse? What do you think? Uh, right now, I'm, I'm kind of on page with you, Tony. I'm thinking it's bland. It depends on what the storylines are leading right up into it. If it makes sense through storyline purpose, then... I'd say it could be, but it's still kind of bland. Like, it already does. <laughs> well, like like Tony was saying, you don't want to call Hell in a Cell Cage. I mean, that would just be it's boring. So yeah, but they're not having a respect match. There's, there's no such thing as a respect match. There's respect in the stories. No, but you don't need it to have like that. It has to have a match necessarily. I mean, they could have like Battleground doesn't have a specific match, but if that was just called like WWE event it would just be like alright they could have just called it NXT TakeOver and just had I don't know who's the main event for that one is it going to be Banks versus uh, Bailey? Mm -hmm. in a 30 minute Iron Man match they should just call it NXT TakeOver Bailey versus Banks with a number treat it like treat it like a fucking MMA or a boxing match see I'd be good with the number Yeah, I'd be good with like how they're going to do with NXT TakeOver Brooklyn and they're probably going to call it NXT TakeOver London because that actually kind of makes sense. Like we're taking over the area that we're in. This one's going to be a Winter Park, Florida, so they can't just put like NXT TakeOver the same location you guys always see. But if they're doing an Iron Man match, a 30-minute Iron Man match between two women, go with something about like – something about Iron. You the know, Iron like, Bird match. Something like that, like – I mean, obviously not Iron Bird, but, like, I we saw one suggestion that somebody put out there, and it was NXT TakeOver Iron Maidens, and I was just like, you know what? I would like that better than NXT TakeOver Respect. I'd like that, That'd but it better. also makes it sound like an old woman's card. That's true. Well, getting to the point I was saying before, Kaylin was trying to say it makes sense if it's part of the story. It is! It's all part of the story, okay? This is, first off... Is going to be the first time we have Divas in the main event of a match of any major WWE event, which is a huge thing showing the respect that these women have put into this craft and have built this division down NXT, which they're getting no respect on Raw. It's only on NXT where they're getting respect from the people that be backstage, from the people watching in the crowd, from their peers. All respect for those women there. To be put in that spot and to be given that type of match all respect. And you also have the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Memorial Tournament, which is not for any kind of title. There's no special thing they're saying. It's all just about respect of winning this tournament, which is being done out of respect for the man Dusty Rhodes. So respect is an excellent name for this TakeOver special event. I think it applies, but that doesn't mean that it's sensational enough. Kind of like how people argue that a lot of so the wrestlers... So should we call it TakeOver Sherry? TakeOver what? Sherry. <sighs> Sensational Sherry. <laughs> it took me a second to figure that out. <laughs> nice. 
Um, it makes sense if you explain it that way, Mike. But I, when I think of the name of the pay-per-view, I want to think that it describes the feuds going on and respect, like, cause that's immediately what I thought of when I was like, respect. It's like, oh, because they respect each other. It's like, yeah, but I guess if you're talking about the fans and the community respecting the athletes and that, that makes more sense. So I'm, I'm warming up to the idea. Do we necessarily need to keep using the word takeover though? I like it. It's, it's, uh, it takes me back to the in your house days, which I always like that. Well, yeah, but even then, they had pay per views that weren't called in your house. But those were the big ones. NXT yeah, didn't have in your house was all the other ones. I, I think eventually ones. NXT could develop some kind of like WrestleMania type show for them, like their anniversary show or something. But they didn't do it this year. And so I don't think they have any immediate plans to. Would you want it to be NXT Takeover Anniversary? Sure. <laughs> but then, what's the point of getting rid of the Takeover? <laughs> That's true. See, I don't like how long these titles are now. WWE NXT TakeOver Respect and then the date. If they like, you know, continue the lineage and stuff like that, that's like way too long. I don't even really like the idea that NXT is called NXT to begin with. Like I would have rather it be it's like something separate like that. NXT to me, it's like it's not an acronym. It doesn't stand for anything. It's just kind of like next but without the E and it sounds a little like um X Division E to me. So when you have like WWE, NXT, TakeOver, Respect, or whatever. Here's the like thing shit. though, you hate any wrestling promotion that doesn't use three letters. No, not ever. Oh well. Yeah, you do. I'd be fine with it if they would have called it something like when they had NXT originally. Still no love for Lucha Underground on the show, people. Lucha yeah, Underground's sure a perfect heard, name for them. I'm pretty sure I heard Tony say I hate Lucha Underground and I hope they go bankrupt. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure he said that. <laughs> no, Lucha Underground separates itself like that. And that's good. I, I still haven't watched any of the shows, so I can't say if the product's good. I've been hearing good things about it. But, like, you know, when they did ECW, I was just like, we don't need to have Raw, SmackDown, and then ECW. Why is it ECW? It could have been extreme. That was shameless. You know? And then when they did NXT, it was just like, well, why is it NXT? Oh, because it it's the, the next group of people. All right, well, then next? Like, yeah, it's just... That on its own is like kind of blah. The takeover name, I like that as just we're takeover because it's, you know, the group that isn't supposed to be at the forefront is pushed into the forefront. But I would kind of like it if this year they kind of end it and maybe they start giving full different names or something. Or like you guys had mentioned earlier, maybe they just go with like NXT TakeOver 8, NXT TakeOver 9. I'd be fine with that. It's something different. Not in like the full spectrum of pay-per-views and stuff, but in WWE, because they, they don't do that in every single one of them. Well, here's something else you got to consider. This is probably also experimental for them. You know, NXT is a place for them to try something like that. Can we, can we do something where we have a successive name and it sticks? Can we do something where we do a number to it and it sticks? Maybe that's something they decide they want to try. That, that's something they also do in NXT. It's not just for a testing ground of the performers. They test a lot of things down there with their production aspects. If you watch, you'll notice like a lot of things might pop up for the first time and then show up on Raw. I think one of the most notable examples of that is the screen that goes along the ring apron. I was going to bring that up, yeah. I'm waiting for someone to go into that and just send it, like, f just totally fuck it up. Oh, they did that. They did that on one of the NXT specials. Yep. I'm hoping Brock does it, because he'll really <laughs> fuck it up. <laughs> well, Brock will rip it off and throw it into the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> and nail a child, most likely. Good. <laughs> Let's move on to another hot tag here. This is one that you guys pestered me to talk about or whatever. I wasn't going to put it out there, but let's see. Arnold Schwarzenegger, WWE Hall of Famer, has replaced WWE Hall of Famer Donald Trump on The Apprentice. Oof. That is going to make that an interesting show. I never considered Arnold Schwarzenegger a businessman. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sure he's made some smart dealings in his time with all the money he's made over the years. He's doing very well for himself, getting the governor's spot, and I, I don't know. This is... I'm going to watch. I never watched The Apprentice too much, only if, like, I knew that there was someone else in the show that I was interested in watching. But Donald Trump is doing some interesting things right now, and uh, <laughs> they, they didn't want to be affiliated with him on that show, so was, there was a lot of question of who was going to be taking it. I could tell you Arnold was not on the list of people I thought that it was going to be. So you didn't see the follow-up to The Running Man that Schwarzenegger was in called The Businessman? <laughs> no, I missed that one. A lot of action. <laughs> no, that was Last Action Hero. 
I do enjoy a good boardroom scene, so maybe I should check it out. Any other thoughts on this uh, hot tag that we needed to include? <laughs> that was a loud ass motorcycle. Jesus. It's still going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's driving away with any cares that I have about this hot tag. <laughs> well, there's our lunchbox for the week. So that's it, I guess, for our hot tags. Tell us what you think about all these different subjects in the comments below. And we're going to take a break with the rest hold and come back and talk about Smack Talk. A little bit weird, but that's what we're going to be doing. So click on the next video. We'll see you in part three.